Mad Max films are a good example of saying actions speak louder than words. Furiosa is the latest in that saga, and what it lacks in dialogue, it makes up for in, well, nonstop action. It's a prequel to Fury Road, and it tells the origin story of the title character, Furiosa. Metro Morning Film columnist Jason Gorber's on the line from Cannes with his thoughts. Jason, good morning. Good morning to you, sir. Nice to speak with you again. Good to have you. Where does this film pick up Furiosa's story? In the past, it's a prequel to a sequel that's a sequel to a sequel. You got that math down? I <laughs> so don't. It's fifth... too early, man. Come on. <laughs> this is the fifth Mad Max film. But yeah, we went decades between Thunderdome, the Tina Turner one with the Mel Gibson, um, to, Fur uh, to Fury Road. Fury Road was amazing. Um, absolutely transformative. Um, one of the great action films of all time. And that took place over two and a half days. And it was just nonstop action where you didn't really care. You knew who the good guys were, you knew who the bad guys were, and you kind of knew the people in the middle. And it was amazing. And so this is a prequel to that. Furiosa is the backstory that the director George Miller wrote for the Charlize Theron character. And so it starts with her as a young girl in this sort of Eden-like environment. And as, you know, things go awry, she eventually morphs into the character that Anya Taylor-Joy plays. Um, the dynamic that she has with people like Chris Hemsworth. And and the film is good. And if it came out as the follow-up to the Mad Max saga, we would be extolling it as this amazing film. The problem is it's a sequel or a prequel to a masterpiece. And it doesn't really hold up nearly as well to Fury Road as maybe some fans might be expecting. This is the fifth Mad Max film. Why does George Miller keep yeah. doing them? It's really, George Miller's career is actually really remarkable. I mean, if you look at the stuff that he did, this sort of apocalyptic era of stuff, like, but he also did Babe and the Babe Pig in the City films. He did the Happy Feet films. So he's this really interesting guy that collides tone and stories and all of this stuff. I think that there's a fundamentally Australian <laughs> um, fetishization in this film in the greatest of ways. The sort of weird um, outback environments and the the cars and the violence, but the affection and all of this stuff all sort of playing to his name Australia. And what's really interesting in this film, I think for the first time, they actually not only lean into the Australian accents, but the opening shot is actually sort of a shot from the globe, and it's a satellite shot. And you can tell that finally we're actually admitting that, yes, the Mad Max inner universe does take place within the continent of Australia. He keeps going back because there's stories to tell. And he also has another story, depending on how Furiosa does. He has the story of how Max got to Fury Road. And we'll see if he actually managed to tackle that. You, you mentioned Anya Joy Taylor, or Anya Taylor Joy. Tell me how um, she does in this movie. She's great. I mean, the challenge is that she we're up against the sort of really reticent, the laconic character, um, an iconic character that um, Charles Theron played. Um, so Anya Taylor-Joy has, has very, very little dialogue and does it all with her eyes. But luckily, she has, other than Betty Davis, some of the most expressive and incredibly cinematic eyes, certainly of her generation. I mean, if even seeing her um, in, in The Witch, which a lot of people saw as their debut, um, she has just incredibly expressive face, but particularly those remarkable, remarkable eyes. So it's it's a, it's a good thing that we're actually having an actor like this that's able to say so much by verbally saying so little. This is a film that uses action as a form of dialogue, and because of that, again, this is something to be seen on the biggest of big screens you can. I saw here in the Cannes Film Festival. But yeah, this is something to go out, spend the extra little money if you can, if you can afford it, and go see it on the IMAX screen or whatever it is that, because this is event cinema. This is summer blockbuster stuff. Maybe not at its ultimate best like Fury Road, but certainly well, well worth your time. Jason Gorber, have a great final time in Cannes. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks so much. Yeah, Just appreciate take care, it. My friend. That is Jason Gorber wrapping up his time there in Cannes. He is, of course, Metro Morning's film columnist. Big change.